Hi, my name is Preston Cochran, and we're in the B room here at Tracehorse Studio in Nashville, Tennessee. In the last video, you got to see how Scotty mixed an entire song in Luna. Today, in our third and final video, I'm going to show you how I master a song in Luna using an Apollo Twin in the Luna software. From the beginning with this production, Scotty and I both knew that we wanted to give Carl's song a lot of dynamics, so uh, I'm keeping that in mind. Not wanting to crush it, not really wanting to overcook it. I often will print through my MCI quarter inch tape machine, but because Scotty used the ATR 102 plug-in on his two bus, I am not doing that today. So this is my mastering setup in Luna. I literally just imported Scotty's mix. He sent me the mix without the limiter on it. And the first thing I'm going to send it to are actually my outboard Spectrasonics V610 complimenters. And I really just use them for ultra fast, ultra transparent peak limiting to give me more headroom in the rest of my mastering chain. And in order to get Scotty's mix hitting the V610s at the level that I like, I literally just use clip gain in this instance and I'm gaining it up just 13 dB of clean gain until it's hitting those complimenters at the level that I really want to see. I'm able to print through the outboard gear using literally just the Apollo Twin because it has additional uh, line outs three and four and I'm able to just set up that send in Luna and it goes through the V610s and then I just print it back in on the line inputs of the Twin. This track right here is the mix printed through the V610s. So from this point forward, the rest of my mastering chain is totally in the box, totally using UAD plugs. The first plugin I start with is my favorite EQ of all time. It's this Brainworks Digital V3. I start off using it in mid-side mode, which gives me the most flexibility to control any problem frequencies that I'm hearing. I'm really only doing a couple of subtle EQ moves on the mids. In this mix, there is some 500 hertz buildup on the sides. That happens a lot of times with hard panned electric guitars. And I'm cutting the 500 out of the sides, really just to affect the electric guitars that Scotty hard panned. And cutting that just gives the master a little bit more clarity and a little bit more headroom to even push it into additional compression and limiting. So if you're not used to soloing up mids and sides, it'll sound a little bizarre, but for me, this plugin with all of its solo features it is honestly the fastest way to find problem frequencies in the sides. I love it. I can't recommend it enough. Moving along, I have a second instance of the same plugin, but it's operating in left-right mode. I usually like to start with mid-side EQ first and then follow it up with more traditional left-right stereo EQ. At this point, I'll usually determine what makeup or reduction needs to happen in the mids and the sides. And I'm using this awesome Bobcats UA plugin that is truly an ambience recovery, but I'm not using that setting at all. I'm literally just using it because it's a great mid side or stereo gain adjustment. And to my ears, I wanted to hear Carl's voice after I made my EQ moves pop just a tiny bit more. And so I'm literally bringing down the sides of the mix, just 0.2 dB, and it just makes the center, which ends up usually being snare drum, kick drum, and lead vocals, it just brings that up into the center the tiniest bit. And uh, this plugin just made it really easy to make a mid-side adjustment like that. Maybe it is too late. 
So after the Bobcats mid-side plug-in, I am using the UAD Precision Multiband, which is my favorite multiband. I use it on every master I do. I absolutely love this plug-in. I use it very aggressively, at least at first glance it appears very aggressive. I like to floor the input of this compressor as much as possible and then compensate with the makeup gain in the inverse. And this makes the compressor work very, very hard. So that means I dial in my ratios very low. Let's just take a listen to the chorus and see what's going on. This compressor was doing, in some bands, as much as 10 dB of gain reduction, which is a lot. Um, but one of my favorite things about this compressor is the fact that it has a mix knob. And so although some of the bands are reacting very aggressively, I'm only really massaging those bands in my mind using this tool. So I blend in as much mix as I really need, depending on what I'm trying to do and depending on the program. So for this song, the mix ended up sounding best to me at 24.5, but that changes all the time. That it, Some mixes and masters it might end up being at 6%, some are over 50%. It's really whatever the program needs and whatever I'm trying to do right before the brick wall limiter. This plugin really just is ultra flexible and helps me shape the tonal character and frequencies of a overall mix. So after my multiband, I have an instance of the Precision Limiter, which is my favorite limiter. It sounds really great gentle, it sounds really great aggressive to my ears. I just absolutely love this limiter and I use it on every master I do. At this point, I really trust my ears to dial in the amount of limiting that a song needs. In this particular song, Scotty and I both really wanted to preserve the dynamics and not have it sound too squashed or too overcooked. So the most I'm doing is three and a half dB. And that's really only on the extremely loud transients that happen in the song. It is not constantly limiting. So it's a very gentle setting that honestly just sounded best to my ears and I'm really happy with how it turned out. So now that I have my plugins dialed in, it's time to print and I set up pretty much just a send from the main going out of virtual one and two and then I set up another stereo track that had virtual one and two as the input and so I muted it and then just hit record and so this track that's being printed is a total print of all of the plugins through my main two bus mastering chain. Once this file is printed, that is when I chop off the dead air, I do my slight fade in, and then I also do any of my fade outs to get the song to be the exact length that I want it to be. And after I do that, I consolidate it, and I now have the completely printed wave sitting within Luna, and from that point, I can export it to whatever delivery mechanism I need. In this instance, I exported it to Seracon to do my sample rate conversion. Uh, but if a client ever asked for high res lossless files, you could deliver that directly out of Luna. I'll wait for you. One of my biggest takeaways, mastering in Luna and tracking and seeing Scotty mix in Luna, is that this is an incredibly versatile piece of software. So if all you had was an Apollo, you are able to effectively track, mix, and master within the same environment 
and get pro level results. It was pretty amazing, honestly, working with the twin since it has such a small footprint and its converters sound excellent. And the fact that I was able to implement outboard gear all in this little package is pretty amazing. Universal Audio has been around for decades. They've made some of the most famous pieces of professional audio gear that have been on hit records from every time period. I see the Apollo hardware and Luna software is no exception. Hit records are being made using these tools and people will continue to make hit records using them. Never been good at making up my mind I'm losing faith, I'm running out of time, time, time Whatever happened to cutting me some slack I'll wait for you to come back I'll So there you go, we made it. Scotty and I had an absolute blast putting the Apollo ecosystem and Luna software to the test alongside our Neve 8014 and analog outboard gear. The Luna workflow allowed the session to run smoothly, the UAD plugins are the best in their class, and the Neve and API summing are not to be overlooked. Again, mad props to Universal Audio, and thanks again to Carl Anderson and the band. Be sure to check Carl out on all streaming services, and to learn more about anything from Universal Audio, definitely visit our friends over at VintageKing.com. Thank you so much for watching.